Hi friends, so today we come to lecture 50 in our helicopter dynamics course and I'm going to make a short video where we are going to discuss the effect of having the rotor near the ground. Okay, so this is a phenomena which has some important effects in terms of power and thrust and you can need to keep this particular ground effect in mind. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now if we think of the rotor all the derivations we have done in momentum theory that have presumed that there is a well-defined slipstream which goes far downstream so essentially we had the rotor with the induced velocity v and then the air went down and became w and w was 2v and therefore that led us to all the calculations in terms of the induced velocity and the rotor power now what would happen if we had the ground not very far downstream of the main rotor. So naturally the ground would block the wake and at a certain point the ground would effectively drive the velocity to zero because you know it is the ground and so it acts as a constraint on the flow field. So the proximity of the ground when the helicopter comes near the ground has a substantial influence on the induced velocity of a rotor. So this is specifically more in our condition and will become less in forward flight. So we will study mostly this particular condition. So essentially the ground acts as a barrier which drives the velocity in the far wake to zero. So what this does is that physically speaking, the induced velocity at the rotor disc and therefore the induced power is reduced. The profile power may also be reduced by a small amount, but really the big action takes place in the induced power. Now, the result of this is that the helicopter at a given weight can hover at lower power. So this support to the rotor is given by the ground. We can think of this as a support and we need to factor this in in many cases because when you are taking off or you are landing, there is going to be this change in the power requirement which is going to come about near the ground. Now ground effect becomes negligible if the distance of the rotor is more than three times the radius compared to the ground. So that's again something to keep in mind. Now there are some models to model ground effect. One of them is the Cheesman and Bennett model. And this model essentially says that at constant power and in our condition, T by T, if there is no ground effect, is 1 by 1 minus R by 4Z, the whole thing squared, where Z is the height above the ground. Okay and z by r should be greater than 0.5 for this model to be valid. Now, what this tells us that there is an increase in thrust possible at constant power, okay? And so this is something to keep in mind as far as being near the ground is concerned. And you often see many creatures such as birds when they fly on top of uh, land or lakes, especially they will fly as close to the surface as possible and one of the reason is that the induced power generation is less and so they like the fact that they are expending less power. Actually there are some vehicles which have been designed, some type of seaplane type of vehicles which essentially fly just on top of the sea or the lakes and therefore the induced power requirement will be low. So the ground effect phenomena is present in helicopters as well as any kind of fixed wing aircraft. It's primarily because of the proximity of the ground and its impact on the induced velocity. One more issue to keep in mind is that whenever you are doing any kind of testing with a rotor in a wind tunnel or in any such situation, maybe even flight testing, if you are very close to the ground, then the measurements you get in terms of induced velocity, performance metrics such as power, will be impacted by the presence of the ground. So at least you need to make sure you are at least two rotor radius 
higher than the ground, preferably three rotor radius would be even better. So that's something to keep in mind if you want your measurements to be used in a general sense and make sure that the results and data you have obtained have not been contaminated by the presence of the ground. So that was my brief take on the ground effect and its impact. More details you can get in papers and in books. And I will then see you in my next video. See you then.